<clears throat> okay, here we go, and today you're going to be finding the volume and surface area of spheres and hemispheres. So let's see how we're going to work out some of these types of problems. Shall we? All right, if you look at the worksheet, you should be able to, say, find the, um, like, see this picture of a sphere, and it's going to talk about the parts of a sphere. So let's look at the parts of a sphere here. So if we go, just like, okay, first off, a sphere is a solid in which each point is equal distance from the center. So it's like a circle in all sorts of directions. <clears throat> okay, so there is a radius. Okay, and, and, and again, that goes from the center straight out to any edge of the sphere. Okay, there is a diameter. That goes from the... Um, Oops, let's do that. And then that goes from one edge through the center to the other edge. Okay? So keep in mind, like, if you have something like that, and let's see if I can do this. Oops, let's not do that. If you have something like that, you can go, you know, across, and as long as it's going edge to edge and through the center, it's kind of hard for me to keep that track, you should be okay. Okay? Um, <clears throat> Brace that. And then let's see here. Uh, oh, of course, there's my center. Oh, I should have remembered that. Now, what makes spear spheres unique is they have what is called a great circle. Okay? The great circle sounds like it should be some type of sci fi thing. But the great circle is basically the circle that <clears throat> slices the sphere into two equal hemispheres. It is basically the circle that's going to have the largest area. Of, of a sphere, okay, and because you could, you'll, I mean, later on, if you ever get to the higher mathematics, you'll talk about how these are, can be sliced up into different slices, parts, and you can see different things from that. Anyways, uh, so let's look at that, or let's look at more about this. Okay, so here are the basic formulas for these. Um, notice that you have pi r cubed and pi r squared, where you have them on the volume, four thirds. And notice that, like, on a sphere, the volume, on a hemisphere, that is, the volume is half of a sphere, because it's half of a half of a sphere. But the surface area is not quite half. And that's because where a sphere has, like, like, all of that going around, a hemisphere is only half, but it still has the great circle part to help make up that surface area. And that's why that's 3 pi r squared, not 4, or not 2 pi r squared. Anyways... So I digress, and I just wanted you all to see that. Um, so let's look at these types of problems and, and see how we can say solve some of these. I mean, it's pretty easy. If you have a calculator that you're trying to use, let's say, off your phone, and you don't know how to do pi r cubed, keep in mind that just means, like here, saying radius times radius times radius. Okay? So if you don't have a way of doing a cube, just multiply it times itself three times, and you've got cubed. Okay? Anyways. Okay, so on like something like this, they're asking you to say solve. So you've got to be able to solve this and kind of go from there. Um, eh, no, I'm losing my place. All right. <clears throat> so here, like they want you to find the volume. Oops, helps if I'm on my pen. And again, fourth, here's the radius. So four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. Ooh, almost forgot that cubed. And you would go from there. Now, <clears throat> obviously, depending on what type of calculator you have, would suggest what you can, how your answer would come out. Um, let's let's look at this. So I typed this into my calculator, and I got four hundred and fifty-seven point say three 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 pi. Okay. And again, I want y'all to know that, like, if I do all the numbers part first, like this and this, and then give you that answer that that's and put a little pi on the end that's uh, that's what would be called in terms of pi now of course most of the time i would want you to actually multiply by pi so times pi to get an answer of 1436.76 inches cube cubic inches okay that would be the volume now, again, all you need here is the radius. So, like, if they give you something like this where you have the diameter, 33 divided by 2 um, is just, 
like it might like again my calculator would normally try to give it to me as a fraction so I change it to make sure I know that the radius here is 16.5 that's a horrible 16 let's try that again there you go and then go from there okay what about the surface area surface area is fairly easy surface area again is just there is only surface area. There is no lateral area here, obviously, because there is no worry about bases or anything like that. But surface area here would be uh, 4 pi r squared. Okay? So here I'm just going to say 4 times pi times the 2.8 squared. And I would get here 4 times 2.8 squared, 31.36 pi, and then if I wanted to get that answer into terms of times pi, if I wanted to, I would get like say 98.52. So now notice when I multiply the pi, I'm, that disappears because pi is a number. It's like multiplying 4 times 2.8. Um, so kind of keep that in mind, guys. I mean, sometimes that, that's things that y'all forget. All right. Anyways, that is volume and surface area of a sphere. Y'all can kind of figure out those problems. And now let's look at the hemisphere. Okay, so for a hemisphere, we're looking at the idea of, again, same thing, just plugging in the numbers where we can, and then going from there. So here, I again, I need the radius, so I've got a diameter. So here the radius is 9 feet. So I would say here for the volume, and you can do number 5. I'm just showing you number 6 because I didn't want to take more than one picture. <clears throat> so the volume here is two-thirds pi times the nine cube. Okay, so here if I say two-thirds times nine raised to the third power, I get 486 pi. And then from there I can multiply by pi to get 1526.81 cubic feet or feet cubed cubic feet or feet cubed all right so that's that that's all you got to do with those and then kind of go from there all right uh let's look at numbers seven or eight seven or eight seven that they're both same thing the, i mean on eight here if you divide by two you get 6.1 for the radius so that's all you got to do uh, <clears throat> so let me look at this one here again surface area is equal to 3 pi times the radius squared, so 14 squared. And again, you can see those formulas from earlier in my slides. So there you go. So here I'm going to say 3 times 14 squared should get 588. Notice I did this without the pi, so I'm always... Because again, I want you all to see that that would be in terms of pi. If you ever asked it like that, because for some reason they used to do that. Um, anyways, times the pi and you get 1,847.26 square yards. 0.26 square yards. Okay, and there you go. That is it for that. It's not very hard at all. All right, so how can I make this hard? Okay, so let's look at these application problems, and yes, I'm gonna ask you to do some of these application problems or whatever. Um, so find the volume of a sphere with a great circle area uh, 201.06. Okay, so keep in mind, the great circle is just a regular circle, which means that the area of that circle was pi r squared. In other words, this two, like if you plug it in, you would be saying 201 point, what was it, 0, 06, that would be the area, is equal to pi times the radius squared. And you got to find the radius. Keep in mind, pi is a number, so you can divide by pi. So if you divide 201.06 by pi, you get about 63.9994, so I'm going to say 64. Okay, so the radi uh, 64 radius squared. Now I'm sure what this person did was they used 3.14 for pi, but whatever. Okay, then you take the square root, and you get that the radius is 8. So keep in mind, that's how you would do that. Now you've got the radius. Now you can find the volume and say volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times 8 cubed. And when you do that, 
you get, let's see here. Let me see what that is. 682.67 pi. And then you can multiply that times pi. And get 2144.66 cubic inches. Okay, so you see how that works. The idea there is can you work backward to find the radius? All right. Um, so how would you find the surface area of, of this figure on the left? Well, that's a good question. Um, ooh, this becomes very interesting. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, so you have a surface area of a cone. Okay which would be, keep in mind that the radius of this is 4.5. So I'm going to put here 4.5, that's the radius, because you have to divide 9 by 2. <clears throat> and the surface area of a cone, if you go back and look, would be pi times the radius squared plus pi times the radius times the slant height. Okay? Uh, and you do all that, you get something like 78.75 pi. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the surface area of the cone. Then you have the surface area of the hemisphere. I'll do something like that. Um, which would have been 3 pi times 4.5. Oops. Y'all see that's a decimal squared, and when you do that, you should get 60.75 pi. Okay, the reason why I'm not multiplying those out is because I'm limited on space. Here's the thing, okay? This surface area is made up with this circle on the bottom. This, ah, I thought I hit the, this, okay. This hemisphere is made up of a surface area with that circle on top. The great circle in this case. So we actually have to find the great circle. So I'm going to put here great circle. And, and if you do that, that area is pi r squared. Which would be 4.5. So that would give you 20.25 pi. Now, you would have to add these two together. So I'm going to put here... Uh, let's do this. Do, do, do. Now, nah, let's do this. I meant to go like this. Okay. So I'm going to put here the surface area is equal to that 75, the total surface area or whatever, is the 78.75 pi plus, okay, this one plus this one because you're adding a cone plus a hemisphere, 60.75 pi. minus that circle, because that circle is actually covered up by those two. But that circle is counted twice. It's counted once here and once here. So I'm going to say 2 times 20.25 pi. Now, with all those pi's, all you would actually be saying is this. 78.75 plus 60.75 minus 2 times 20.25. And when you do that, that's a good question. What do you get? You get 99, which would be 99 pi, and then you could multiply by pi at the end. That That's what I would do. That way you don't deal with some messy numbers. And there you should get 311.018, so we'll say 02 square meters. Okay, so you kind of see the idea how that would work. Like you have to keep in mind, like in something like this, like <clears throat> if they say, uh, let's see here, okay, Assuming the entire space is used, what's the maximum amount of grain the solid can hold? So this one is a volume formula. This one was a surface area. So notice on the surface area, I, I had to take this surface area for this whole thing, but I took out that circle. I had to take out this surface area for this, but I took out that circle. Okay? On a volume, I just got to find the volume. I got to find the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a hemisphere. So here, let's do it this way. Volume is equal to two-thirds... Oh, do I need any other information? That's a good question. All right. Keep in mind that this radius is 11 feet, which means from here to here also is going to be 11 feet because that's this distance right here. Okay, so that's 11. 
Okay, so if I subtract 11 from 45, I find out the height of the cylinder is 34 feet. Doom, doom, right? Because I kind of needed that. Now, so here I would say 2 thirds pi times 11 cubed, which is equal to 187.33 pi. And then let's do the volume of the cylinder. Do, do, do. The cylinder would be pi times the radius squared, 11, times the height, which was 34. Okay, and again, you can look up that formula. So I'm having to use different formulas. This is where having a formula sheet probably would have been helpful. Anyways, um, and that one I get 4,114 pi. Now I can add that this part with this part and just stick a pi on the end, and the volume of that would be, let's see here, plus... 887.33 whoops I multiplied so make sure again you type it in correctly because I multiplied oops oh well and you get 5001.33 pi and then I can multiply by pi and get a volume of 15,712 0.1 cubic feet. And, and again, guys, that, that, that leads to so many other things that you can discover and would make things fairly interesting. All right. So what do I want y'all to do? Um, okay. So I did include all, all of those, those problems. So for the assignment, okay, hopefully you got those notes and, and, and let's say, um, so let's say that you, uh, for CP, y'all can do pages three and four. So the last two pages of this worksheet, the odd problems, one through 15. So one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, and 15. Okay. If you want to do some of the others, go for it. You know, learn, try, do, you know, uh, it wouldn't hurt. Pre P, you should be able to finish out these problems. I mean, most of this stuff is pretty quick to type into a calculator. If you have some problems with the uh, the application problems, I understand, but do your best. Anyways, guys, as always, if you have questions, feel free to email me, text me, send me a remind, whatever. Uh, I am replying to them as quickly as I can. I do hope y'all are being safe. Take care, enjoy, have a good day, and thank you so much for your time.